I am Anil Kumar and in this video we will talk about measure of dispersion. So let me take up an example here and let us take uh, shoe sizes of students in grade 10 for example right. So let us take a sample data for shoe size. So, so we, they come in numbers let us say the numbers are let me write down a few numbers here let us say 34. 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, let us say, right? These are different shoe sizes. And let's assume that we do uh, sample data for uh, grade 10 students. And we find that most of the students have shoe size of, let us say, 38. So let's say, uh, four students are here with 38 and then we have three for 37 two here and uh, let us say we have three students and one here kind of let's say that's the kind of distribution so in a way how many students did we check five and four nine nine ten eleven twelve and one thirteen right so we got 13 students here and we find that uh, uh, their shoe size is uh, kind of distributed like this. On the other hand, if we take a general shoe size of high school students, let's take so data for high school students, so uh, which includes grade 10 students also, we may find still that most students have 38 size. For example, we may have three students here but it will be kind of more dispersed since we are now including grade 9, 10, 11, 12 students and let's say that we have data starting kind of like this, right? So, so we have, let us say, data something like this, which means we have taken how many students? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. So let's say we have two students here, one here, okay. So let's say now the data received is kind of like this. As you will observe, we do have most students whose size is 38. That means uh, mode is same, correct? If we try to find the mean, uh, we might get the same shoe size, right? So, so we'll find mean so we may have the same shoe size and even the median may be same, correct? So what I'm trying to say here is uh, we can calculate mean and median also. So what we have here is uh, 5, 9, 10, 13. So that sum of students here is, is equals to 13. In this case, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13. So we are working with the same sample size of 13. And uh, the center number will be half of 13, which is uh, 6.5, right? So if you do the cumulative frequency, arrange them in order, 6.5 means 2 and 3, 5, 6, 7. That means median is is 38 right so in this case you find mode is 38 median is also 38 and for this group also if I take 13 6.5 so 1 2 and 3 3 4 5 6 7 8 so that group is again the same place so what we find here is that mode and median is kind of same right now if we have more median same, do you think this data represents kind of similar thing? Well, you will find that here central tendencies which we are talking about are same, right? So we have uh, same central tendency. However, there is a huge difference on range. Now range in first case 
is from the size 36 to 40. Do you see that? So the range in case 1 is 40 minus 36. In the other case, it is from 42 to 34, right? It is from 42 to 34. So there is a huge difference in range. On one end, we have a range of just four sizes, right? On the other hand, we have a range of 10 sizes, correct? So what you notice here is two data, they have very different dispersion. So that is where measure of dispersion becomes important, right? So, so they are similar in the sense that they have same central tendencies. That means mean mode and median is same, right? But on the other hand, range is different. So therefore, it becomes very important for us to measure the dispersion, right? So this is just to give you an idea that how dispersion is very important to consider. Now when we move forward, we'll kind of look into dispersion from two different angles. One, with the base as median, and the other with the base as mean. So if we are talking about median, we'll kind of uh, look into median as second quartile, and we'll look into first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and we'll talk about inter-quartile range and also semi-quartile range. All these are based on median and to represent them, we'll kind of make a diagram which is commonly called box and whisker diagram, kind of like this. So this is the kind of figure which we are going to draw where these limits are defined by Q1, Q2, Q3. This is the lowest and that's lowest and highest, right? Anyway, so this will be called as box and whisker plot, right? So that is in reference to dispersion when we are taking into consideration median. On the other hand, we'll talk about mean, where we'll talk about standard deviation. So this deviation is from the mean, right? So standard deviation will be in terms of mean, which can be designated by letter sigma, which will be when we consider population, the whole population, or with the S, when talking about a sample which represents the population, right? And we'll also talk about another term which is square of standard deviation, right? So we'll talk about another term which is called variance. We'll talk about variance, which is square of sigma square, right? So these are the terms which we are going to talk about. And you will also notice that this relation between sample and the population standard deviation is, is related. So, so normally the sample will show you lesser deviation as compared to the population because we are not considering the whole thing, right? So, so the relation between them will be sigma equals to square root of n, the number of items which you take in the sample divided by n minus 1. So this is slightly greater than the standard deviation which you get from a sample, right? So this is a very important relation which you should keep in mind when you explore this chapter on dispersion. I hope this gives you a good introduction on what we are getting into and we'll take a few examples to practice and solve and understand these terms. I'm Anil Kumar. You can always share and subscribe my videos to understand topics in details. Thank you and all the best.